Good morning to you, Dave. How you doing today? You know, last time I joined you, I was sitting in the car, and I think you guys went to break before you brought me on. I thought I had a quick second, so I apologize. Oh, that's that's my fault, man. That's my fault. Since we normally break like right at nine a.m., so since it's a little later in the hour, we we were we were just talking and you know just kind of talking about the Lions and Dan Campbell and where they're at, and then of course, I mean, you released your mock draft earlier this week. Um, and number seven, you got the Lions taking a quarterback. You like it? Um, I know it's, uh, I think it's been <laughs> Do met, we like it? Mixed, <laughs> it's been met with mixed reaction because you either think they need one uh, or, or you don't. You know, you, you want them to build everything else. I mean, look, I, I think the Lions, um, they, everyone knows they have a million holes. But to me, still the most important thing that they can do in the draft or the most important thing they need to do, I guess, to, to have a sustainable future is to nail the quarterback position. And I don't think Jared Goff is, is, is that guy. I mean, I'm, I'm willing to give him a chance, obviously. But I think if that guy is there at number seven, if you identify a player that you think can be a very special quarterback, then you take him. And Trey Lance, to me, he has all the traits to be special. I know he's a long way away. Uh, but the Lions have the luxury of maybe bringing him along if they, they need to. You know, he doesn't have to play right away. So uh, this first version of the mock, he was there. I, I decided that's the, the route that I was going to take. Um, and, yeah, you know, I'm sure I'll do a couple more of these before this thing uh, really happens. But I, I think Trey Lance is – I think he's going to be a top ten pick. And if he was there at number seven, I think the Lions should absolutely consider him. Hey, Dave, thanks for joining. I've looked at a couple of different mock drafts from uh, Black Fox Sports or CBS, and they have the Lions taking a wide receiver at the seventh pick. What have you heard about the Lions potentially going in any direction with wide receiver, either in the, through the draft or through free agency? Yeah, um, look, I mean, that's one of the, the needs, right? As I said, they've got needs all over the board. I mean, all across the defense, wide receivers, certainly um, their top three receivers are free agents. Uh, you know, quarterback, they need, probably need some, some help at tackle. Um, but look, wide receivers specifically, this is a good year for wide receivers. I mean, quarterbacks, offensive tackles, wide receivers, I think are the strength of, of this year's draft. At least that's sort of the, the early signs. And number seven, there could be some guys that are, are very good prospects available. Jamar Chase, um, you know, Devonta Smith, really either of those Alabama receivers, Jalen Waddell. Um, so I wouldn't rule it out at this point. Uh, you know, I, I, and, you know, Marvin Jones is probably going elsewhere in free agency. I, I highly doubt Danny Amendola is back. He might even retire. Kenny Galladay is certainly a candidate for the franchise tag. But even if you franchise him, you might be doing it with the intent of trading him down the line. So you still need a number one receiver. So I, I would not uh, rule out a wide receiver for the Lions at number seven. I just would um, – the way that I would build the team, frankly, I would I would value receiver a little bit less. I would rather spend that, that pick on quarterback if he's there – maybe on a, a defensive player like Micah Parsons if he's there, even though I know a guy like Jamar Chase, I, I think at least is going to be a really good NFL player. So you mentioned uh, some wide receivers, and obviously like this is a very strong wide receiver draft, but one of the guys uh, that's been kind of falling in everybody's mock drafts, and I don't really know why, is Devontae Smith. Do you Are you getting a buzz about why everybody's kind of devaluing him right now? Because there were talks about him being like a top five pick. Now they, people have him fallen out of the 15 and down to the 20s. Well, yeah, I don't see that happening. I mean, I think it's about body type a little bit, right? He's not obviously the biggest receiver. Um, I, I think that's why Jamar Chase will be the, the number one receiver taken. I mean, he's got the the frame, the stature that, that NFL teams look for. Plus, he was so productive last season with Joe Burrow. I know he sat out this year. Smith is a phenomenal player, too. I wouldn't put it past him. But if I was betting on one of those guys long term, I think I would I would lean towards the guy with the more NFL-ready body. So I, I think that's part of it. But look, when, when I look at this draft, and again, it's still very early in the draft process for me, but I think there are – um, you know, there, there's probably – look, the quarterbacks are going to get pushed up. You know, I, I don't know that they're going to go one, two, three, four, but I think all four of those guys will go in the top ten. And then you take the quarterbacks out of the mix, you know, there's probably five or six blue-chip players. And, and to me, those receivers, you can make a case that all three of those receivers are in that caliber. So, um, you know, throw in Sewell for Morgan, the, the left tackle – uh, you know, I think Micah Parsons is the best defensive player in the draft. At least that's the the early feedback that I've gotten. 
Um, and then I would put those receivers right after them. So it's probably a little bit of um, need, positional value, depth at the position. You know, there are some people in the league who sort of view the league, who sort of view the um, like the running back position where maybe it doesn't make sense to draft one so high because, uh, you know, the value of that position in the second round, you can still find a pretty good one. So the headline is what obviously got us all because you had Trey Lance as the number seven pick coming to the Detroit Lions. So I wanted to ask you two questions to this one. And the first one is, are you saying that Trey Lance, you're settling for him? Or are you saying that this is the quarterback that you want? Um, so, all right, I'll, I'll be clear on that because I'm still early in my quarterback evaluation. I tend to – this is the way I do it, guys, at least. I don't know how everyone else does it out there, right? I'll, I certainly watch, you know, cut-ups on these guys. But I, I tend to listen to what scouts are telling me about these players, right? These guys are the trusted eyes. They know a whole lot more than I than I do. So I lean on the, the people that I know. I'm not a scout. I lean on the scouts who do this for a living. Um, I think the feedback that I've gotten so far is that Trey Lance is extremely talented, but very raw. He's 20 years old right now. He hasn't played a lot. You know, that's typically a red flag for teams. They want to see a little bit more production, but he has all the traits and elite traits to be a special quarterback in the NFL. He just needs time to develop. He needs a, a, a an organization that's going to be patient with him and, and put the right plan in place. And so, for where the Lions are at, they don't need a quarterback to come in and play right away. You know, that's Jerry Goff. And Trevor Lawrence is the number one quarterback in this draft. I don't think there's much doubt about that. I think Zach Wilson is probably number two, and I would put him ahead of Lance, you know, if, if both of those guys were available at seven, um, just based on the, the body of work. But, in, in you know, Justin Fields, I think, is probably right in that mix too. But Trey Lance, for where the Lions are, for what they want to be, I think he's a really good fit for them because, you know, uh, Dan Campbell's on record as saying he wants a mobile quarterback. Um, you look at what Anthony Lynn has done with, with you know, some of those elements uh, at the quarterback position in the past. Uh, you just look at where the game has, has gone and where it's evolving to. Um, I think he fits a lot of that. And again, um, what John Dorsey, what some, what everyone really in this front office, the, the quarterbacks that they've been a part of drafting, um, a lot of those guys are, are, and I'm not comparing Trey Lance to Patrick Mahomes at all, but you looked at Mahomes coming out and you saw all these raw tools and you said, well, that guy can be a special player. And I think that's what you, you have to take that, that big picture view of Trey Lance and say, look at these tools, look at the skills that he has. If we bring him along the right way, he can be a really special player. So for me, it's about that. And then it's about finding the quarterback of the future. It's about that positional value and needing that piece in order to have sustained long-term success. So you mentioned Zach Wilson, and I know, um, or at least I've heard rumors about Dorsey and the relationship with the Wilson family and about how he's been prepping Zach Wilson for the draft. Um, is there a situation, perhaps, that the Lions fall in love with Zach Wilson and use some of their assets that they attained getting Goff to trade up, maybe, or just by sheer luck hope he falls to seven? Yeah, you're you're right. I think it was Tony Pauline who had first sort of noted that relationship that John Dorsey was advising Zach Wilson's family on whether he should go pro. Um, one of several people, I think, that the family had turned to just for advice on that. Um, so I don't know exactly how deep that relationship is, but there is certainly a connection there. I think Zach's going to be the, the number two quarterback taken, and it's probably – if it's not the Jets, the Jets are going to trade that pick in all likelihood. Maybe the Dolphins trade their picks. Somebody is is moving into the, the top two or three picks to take a quarterback, and I would guess right now that Zach Wilson is that guy. I don't think the Lions are going to be in a position to move up to get that quarterback. Certainly they have this additional draft capital, but I think part of the allure of taking a quarterback at seven, um, and that would sort of be what the allure was last year of, of taking a quarterback at three, is that – you know, you, you don't have to spend these extra resources. You're in a position to get that guy right now. And therefore, you can continue building the other elements of your team. You know, the defense, you can use these picks on that. You can use those future draft picks how you want. Um, so I, I think um, if you can stay at seven, that's the ideal spot for the Lions if one of those quarterbacks is there. I wouldn't be too too happy about giving up, 
you know, a first round pick next year or even a second rounder this year, because again, the Lions do have so many holes. And I think when you start to, to not, you know, use your resources wisely to fill those holes, I think that's when you dig yourself into a bigger rut. Hey, Dave, I got another question. Let's switch shift to free agency real quick with the Lions current cap situation, even though I know there's probably going to make some roster cuts down the line. What have you heard about potential targets there? They'll look at this uh, off season to fill some of those holes. Uh, it's a new regime, so we're still trying to get to know everyone over there, coaches and, and uh, front office people included. But um, I would just say in general, the approach to free agency that they're going to take is that they're not going to be the biggest spenders on the market. You know, they're not going to go out and make the splashiest signings. But I do think you'll see them – um, make some wise choices and, and, you know, make some, maybe, the, maybe there will be some, some specific targets of, of guys that they have, you know, had a history with in the past. You think about, you know, look at the secondary and Aaron Glenn and some of the free agents coming out of New Orleans, uh, you know, that obviously have ties to a, to a Dan Campbell too. I, I think that's, that's an area where maybe, you know, you look at Tracy Walker is going to be back and they've got some young cornerbacks. And if, if they can add another safety there, you know, that could form the nucleus of their team. Um, you know, I, I think they, they need to overhaul this linebacking core. Um, f- first and foremost, maybe let's back up. They, they need to make decisions on Romeo Acquire and Kenny Galladay, right? And I think both of those guys are worth bringing back, and they'd like to bring them back if the price points are right. Um, and they might have to use the franchise tag on Galladay. But then, you know, you need to, to fix that defense. Uh, and, it, again, I, I've used this before, and I apologize if I used this with you guys last year or last week, but – Um, You know, I I look at a guy like Kyle Vandenbosch, who the Lions signed in 2010, right? He wasn't the biggest, best defensive end out there, but he was a really good fit, and he knew Jim Schwartz, and he was sort of the culture guy that they needed. That's that's the type of free agent that I think the Lions will target next month. Guys on that defense uh, at the receiver position, you know, too, maybe that really fit what these coaches want and can be a part of this thing for the next few years to help what's going to be a rebuilding organization. Yeah, you know, when you're talking about the coaches that we have, obviously a lot of them are ex players, and you know, not to equate this to exactly like Jawan Howard at University of Michigan being an ex player, um, but with Detroit not always being a desirable destination for free agency, do you think those ex players and their connections uh, will play a factor in almost quote unquote recruiting free agents to come here and be like, hey, it's really not that bad. Maybe. And you know what I mean? If it turns out anything like Juwan Howard, the Lions got to be really happy with it. Right. I mean, look what, what they're doing over there. Um, I think, you know, certainly there, there will be ties. Right. I, I mentioned the, the Aaron Glenn and, and, you know, Marcus Williams, I guess, is, you know, he's a free agent. And he's a safety in New Orleans. And that's a guy that I think a lot of people will you know sort of connect the dots and say maybe that can happen in Detroit. Um, so I, I do think that, uh, you know, some of those players or some of those those coaches that have good reputations in the locker rooms that they've come from um, that will be important to, to, you know, maybe luring a free agent to, to come to Detroit. But look, the bottom line in free agency for a lot of these guys is you're looking for money. And so that's going to be the deciding factor. You're looking for opportunity. You know, if maybe if you're a young guy who hasn't had, you know, think about Marvin Jones when he was a free agent the first time around, he wanted to be a number one receiver. Um, you know, and, and if you're a, a veteran, you're looking for a place to win, and that's probably not Detroit, you know, in 2021. So I think those those three things will be the most important factors. But uh, to your point, I, I do think that could be a tiebreaker where it's like, yeah, I want to go play and, and learn for uh, Mark Brunel, uh, an Antoine Randall, you know, an Aaron Glenn, whoever it is, because they have good reputations. Hey, Dave, uh, next time you see Dan Campbell, could you let him know about this T-shirt that we got here? It's a Wheaties box <laughs> where it's all like about it. the kneecaps because, you know, our coach is biting kneecaps. Like yeah, I like it. What are those retail for Dave one. <laughs> <laughs> we got to send you both one. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's well, pretty good because, I mean, honestly, that's, you know, like people still associate that with him. You know, when I talk to people, agents or, you know, whoever, uh, radio hits in, in other markets, that, that's that's one of the things that they always say, right? How are your kneecaps? What's going on with Dan? You know, we love his press conference. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. I think he's going to be associated with that for a long time. Hey, we always wanted our own culture here. We're sick of stealing from other people, and I think the kneecap culture is, like, our thing, you know? Like, the Raiders were just win, baby. Like, the kneecaps are now our thing. I like it. Tough. 
gritty. No, I mean, that's that's who this, you know, the city is. And that's why it resonated here where maybe it didn't, you know, in other places. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you, Dave Burkett from the Detroit Free Press for coming on with us discussing uh, your projection for the mock draft, giving us some insight into the Lions camp. Uh, we appreciate you coming on and we appreciate you being a part of the show. So thank you so much, man. Yeah, you got it, guys. Maybe we'll, uh, we'll do it again when free agency rolls around in a couple of weeks. Sounds good. Look forward to hearing from you. Adam, let's take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about Michigan basketball. Uh, we have a big TikTok artist. Uh, his name is Polo Frost. He's got the number one song on TikTok right now, and he's going to be coming in in probably about 10 minutes right here on the Woodward Sports Network.